Hey everyone, and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about The Handmaid's Tale, Season 1, Episode 10. It is the season finale. It is called Night. Full spoilers for the episode, as always. Just, just every time you think there's a bit of hope, or every time you think Serena Joy is maybe softening, and is maybe seeing the error of her ways in the world that she's helped create... It just drags you back down. Yeah, yeah. Just when you think she's all right, she she gives you a a, a backhand out of nowhere. <laughs> a backhand that is so hard that your head bounces off the wall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that was a, that was a pretty brutal brutal. So, I, I thought what was really interesting about this episode. It was not at all what I think either of us expected because we've been saying for a while we expect the cliffhanger for the season to be that she's pregnant. Yeah, and that was just a plot point. Like that was the start of the episode, yeah. more or less. And it was like, okay, this is this is not about that at all. No, I mean, I, I think it's maybe a testament to it. Subverting expectations, but not doing it in a way just to be, oh, surprising. Like it's still everything that happened still worked and still resonated. I think. I yeah. think in this episode, there is two phenomenal standout scenes that just stick out as two yeah. of the best scenes of the show so far. And uh, so we'll we'll get into it. We started with a, a flashback. Um, it wasn't it wasn't really a flashback episode. But I think we had two, but yeah, they 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 both kind of called back to other kind of flashback periods that we'd had. And going back to an offered flashback made it kind of feel like it tied into the start of the show. It also kind of did that with the towards the end, just before the the final moment of the show. Uh, she offered sitting in front of the window like she was at the start of the first episode. So again, there's some bookmarking going on. There's things that make it feel yeah. a little bit symmetrical. Yeah, to quote the <laughs> to quote the infamous George Lucas, it's like poetry. It rhymes. Is that the best you got? What do you want from me? What do you want from better, me? Better. So we start with the flashback. It was, and again, we talk about book book ending things. Yeah. The, the the flashback book ended what we see towards the end of the episode, where it's the first time uh, June's ever made to say, uh, "I'm sorry, uh, Aunt Lydia," mm. and you know she 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 hits her and she's. Well, I say she has a shock her with a stun rod. Yeah, yeah, the shock sticks we've been seeing. Yeah, um, and it, it, that's all it really is. It's just it's, it's, June hadn't she, quite learned not to look around yet, and yeah, she's was, caught looking. The, the, it was just for a, a moment of symmetry, really. Yeah, uh, it was. It was a nice moment, and what it did, you know, like you say, it was showing her at the, the start of her journey still, and and where she is now. And that, that's that was pretty much the whole point of it. Yeah, yeah, and then later on when we find out she's pregnant. We have that that little, little flashback where she sort of pulls the covers over her head, and it it harkens back to when she was pregnant the first time, and her and Luke were kind of you know having a moment and joking about the, the baby and uh, it being a good kicker and all the rest of it. So yeah. there's just a couple of small moments, and I think yeah, there was probably too much to do to have like a, a fully devoted flashback, but I do kind of like the idea that they had at least one offered flashback because that's kind of how we started the show. For the first like half of the season, it was a lot of flashbacks with her. Yeah, and I think that's what it was. It was really going. No, we we we've gone through all this other stuff, but it's still her journey at the end of this season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so she, she she hides the package that she got at the end of last episode uh, behind behind the bath, and it's when she's coming out and she gets that that wallop of a backhander which sends her into the the wall to the point mm. where you know it's just bust her open. She's she's bleeding, uh, and Serena's just like shout, shouting shouting. The phrase that I really, really appreciated was, uh, you couldn't have left anything for me. Yeah. But, uh, and obviously she picks up the dress, and as this is all playing out, the, the, the light's beaming through the window, uh, which is something this show likes to do. Uh, throughout this whole thing where she's on the floor, there's just this harsh light coming through the window. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so, so she, she, she's she's figured a lot of things out. She Obviously, we've seen her go into the, the commander's room, you study last episode, she's found stuff, she's more aware of things, there's more in that as the episode goes on as well. Um, but she forces her into the toilet and makes her take a pregnancy test, which it it kind of occurred to me at the time. I was like, "Oh, listen, I didn't realize they test like that." But it was actually addressed in a later scene that uh, they don't test it like this. This is she got this from the black market. That, like they don't yeah. have these tests just kind of kicking around anymore. Yeah. Uh, but she she sits there and forces her to pee, and it, it's interesting that as soon as like she gets the news and it's like a positive sign. Uh, she immediately switches back to society's. It's you know praise be, yeah, yeah, be I, light, blah 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 blah. I realized while she was waiting for it and she was down on her knees praying in front of it, you know the light coming in, 
yeah. but we were cut in between her and Offred also on her knees. She was over the bath with her blood. But it was it was just cut in between these two women on their knees, you know, in the same sort of position, just for completely different reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was like she, she's praying for Serena's praying for something. Obviously, it's, and again, it's in this beaming white light. It's almost angelic. This yeah. shot of her in this light, and then Alfred's. Yeah, she, she's literally bleeding for what the other person wants, yeah. and it's it's kind of the idea that in this situation, Serena is in a lot of ways no better than some of the men who are who have enacted this society. She, she is using her for her own gain. Yeah. Uh, she's given herself her own power, uh, position of power. And But my favourite part of this whole scene, though, is when she comes in and she says, you're pregnant, and she sort of like kneels down next to her at the bathtub. And she's like, oh, we prayed for this, it's a miracle, or you know, whatever she says, her, her usual spiel. Yeah. And I like the offerings at the point where she just doesn't give a shit anymore. And she gives this smile. It's, it's this, are you serious smile yeah. you think i prayed for this and it felt like for the first time with her with serena that she wasn't putting on the mask she wasn't doing that i am the you know the subservient handmaid i will do whatever you ask mrs waterford this was just you think i prayed for this you think i wanted that and she just she's yeah. smiling and uh again it was just it's great acting from moss but it, it just the whole I was I, I almost expected her to go further. Like I almost felt she's going to go on a rant. Well, that's it. I th- I think you you expect it, but then it's at the same time she still has some awareness of of the danger. Yeah, yeah. It's like I mean, arguably, like any other time, this might have crossed enough of a line. But yeah. given the news that Serena just got, it it was almost like she's safe for a minute. Like, yeah. like this this gives her safety. She knows that. She won't risk hurting her anymore while she's like this. That said, I mean, I think even I'd almost argue that she isn't even thinking about that though. I I, I think <laughs> after what she's just went through, the hit, she's at her breaking point. Everything obviously, the bridge stuff was just just yeah, then yeah. just happened just a little bit ago. Um, I I think she was just for a moment she lost herself and was like, I don't give a shit. I'm just yeah yeah like, quite possibly yeah. I, I I that's kind of how I feel about it. Uh, but so we have this this moment afterwards though it's not right after I think there's another scene before that I want to skip to this scene first though it's uh, with Nick mm. when uh, Nick comes in and he sees the cut and he's like are you okay what happened she's like, oh, she, she found out and she says that she's pregnant Yeah. and he, he leans down next to her and he puts his hand on her stomach and at first she's like no don't she's like too upset she doesn't want to deal with yeah. this kind of thing but it actually does comfort her. It becomes a sort of kind of sweet moment where she puts her hand over his and she kind of tears up a little bit. And it, it feels like this moment's like, oh, because it's probably his kid. Uh, now, admittedly, we don't know that for sure, but it seems very just implied from from what yeah, uh, Serena the implication said has been that that the commander is impotent. I mean, they, they could still swerve us the other way. I mean, I think there's enough of a leeway here that it could go there, but at yeah, least right could, now, it seems, it seems like it's probably Nick's. Yeah. Uh, but again, that, like, Serena walks out and she sees this. She sees Nick having this tender moment with her, and you're, you're almost you're almost tricked here. You almost think, oh, she's seen a little bit of humanity, and she's letting it go because she sees how real it is, and she feels the emotion in the scene. And again, this is what I mean about you. You're thinking, oh, maybe she is not so bad. She's like, because even though the the backhand and the hit and the forcing to do the test, even though that was quite vicious in the way you it was done, you get where she was coming from out of a place of anger. Yeah, you get that she's angry. She's letting everything get to her. Uh, she again, you feel like she's realizing that, that line that I said that I really liked. The uh, you couldn't have left in for me. That's like her realizing that the way our own system that she helped build is treating her, and she's maybe realizing this wasn't the best. At least you can maybe interpret it that way. Yeah, and, I think it, it was a moment where she let her emotions get the better of her. Usually, yeah. we, she is quite composed still, even amongst the the rage that she has. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of what happened. As soon as she she got the result of the test, she kind of slipped back into yeah, praise be, <laughs> you know, right away, uh, and she kind of lets it go. And Nick, and again, kind of like how Alfred almost didn't care to hide her true feelings when she like smiled and said, "You think I prayed for this?" Nick, I mean, Nick, sure, he he takes his hand away and he stands up, but he doesn't. He doesn't back away quickly as if he was doing something wrong. He doesn't react that mm. way. He just slowly and calmly stands up uh, and then waits for what she, she wants to say. And she's like, oh, I'm taking Offered away. Get your get your hood, get your, your wings, I think they call them. Um, yeah. And uh, we won't be in you, Nick, kind of thing. Uh, but let's not gloss over the, the scene with Serena and the commander. 
together. Yeah. Uh, Commander comes in home and his study's open. And he comes in and Serena's sitting and there's the Scrabble board and the PCs are out in front of her. And I'm like, oh dear. Oh dear. Because uh, that was their first intimate thing, really, between yeah, it was. Offord and the Commander. Now, it's funny because I think this scene is interesting just in the way the Commander... Because I almost expected him to immediately get kind of... You know, I'm the man in the house, what are you doing in my room? Like, as yeah, soon as he walks, yeah, get offended that she's yeah. broken the rules. Because as soon as he walks in, you feel like... I mean, isn't I mean, isn't in our society have a reason to be upset, but given the rules that the show has set up, you expect him to be upset because we know she's not even allowed to go in there. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, no one's allowed to go in there but him uh, without his permission. So... But he, he kind of lets it go. He doesn't even bring it up. He just kind of he asks if everything's okay, and he, he immediately tries to get rid of her. He's like, "Oh, I've got conference calls to make. I've got things to do." Um, and she she tells him stuff. She's like, "Oh, she's pregnant." She's like, "She left makeup on my on my on my gown on my hood." Like, I I know is that how you got past the checkpoints? I'm aware of all this. And she flat out gets up and says, uh, "You better keep your damn hands off her. I don't want her hung." And that, that, that and this kind of ties into the thinking, well, maybe she is not too bad. Like, it's almost like is she trying to like not? She doesn't want her to commit. Not just because she has a baby in her, because obviously you could almost interpret it that way as well. She doesn't want anything bad to happen to her because she's now with child. But I think for a moment you almost want to believe that she also just doesn't want her to commit suicide. Yeah, yeah. I think I was just reading it as the the, the child. I think she's so caught up in that. I, I get it. I I completely get that. But I, I think for a moment I just wanted to believe that she actually just doesn't want her to be. I it's think like, I think the show has beaten the hope out of me, where oh, I, I, I don't even it. have that moment anymore. Where I just go, nah, nah, I, she just wants the kid. I can it. But kind of how like Aunt Lydia is still protective of the handmaids. It kind of felt like as much as Serena Joy is awful to her for a lot of reasons, she still believes in the system, and the idea mm. that driving a handmaid to suicide would still be a something that's wrong to her. She still she she still see that as an appalling crime. Yeah, uh, and she would still try to uphold that. Uh, but of course, th- this scene goes to a really dark place where she she does make demands, she does make these things, um, and he he basically flips it and finally, for the first time in the show, really turns around and says, "Yeah, okay, yeah, sure, the god rules over us, but I rule over you. Go to your room." Yeah. He actually said the, the phrase, "Go to your room." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the first time he's really pulled rank, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. If you want to put it that way, it was actually after that where she first told him about the baby. Um, yeah. And again, they go into their praise. Be they both say it. They both go into the the narrative that they're supposed to be upholding. Uh, but this was a fascinating scene because it was the first time we'd really seen him treat her quite like this. A lot of it was there. A lot of it was implied. We've seen little subtle elements of it throughout the show, certainly. But this was the first time he flat out just, as it were, put his foot down uh, to yeah. put it in sort of modern phrasing. Uh, but I, I thought that was really fascinating to see and to see her reaction and for her to feel her to feel the repercussions of the world she's helped build which she even says in the scene she actually says yeah I know what the laws are because she says oh do you want to play Scrabble was basically the thing let's play yeah. she wants that intimate moment with him that he's that she's kind of figured out that he was sharing with her she wants that and he immediately just shoots it down with no but you know the laws it's like yeah I know the laws I help write them so it's it's something got herself to blame ultimately. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I th- I, th- I think it further shows the hypocrisy because if she did truly believe all this that we should go to, into the society for all these reasons, the idea that then he is oh yeah I'll, I'll uphold them I'll agree but he's then taking advantage of it and again doing whatever he wants uh, behind closed doors. Yeah, and obviously it applies to her as well because like like I say she's very aware of the laws but she's still suggested to play Scrabble anyway, like. It's, she's wrote the laws and she's like oh we, they should be followed but maybe not by me yeah yeah uh, but I, I think that's almost a sign to me that she is start, even if she's still an awful person and given the rest of the episode I'm inclined to think that certainly she is over a line <laughs> shall yeah. we say uh, I, I do still kind of see this as she's maybe starting to not entirely love the world she's built yeah yeah I see what you're saying because you know, later on when uh, like she's building the crib and he comes in and he, he tries to like make the apology, he's like, "Oh, I said some awful things. I'd like to apologise." Uh, and he he leans in and says, "Because uh, she calls it, because uh, like, she's upset because she couldn't give the child." She says, "I, I, I you know, it's not my my child, really, kind of thing." And he says, "No, it is her. She, she'll be gone. And then it'll just be us, and we'll be a family." 
and it's almost like he's he's like yeah but she's going to be gone and we'll forget she ever existed yeah uh, and I, I don't think she can forget is the thing no, no not at all yeah it's too late for that where he's quite happy to do that he's quite happy to uh, almost like we've, we've just seen with uh, Janine and her family where yeah there was this kind of connection between the handmaid and him but he was quite willing to just let it go and forget she ever existed and it came back to bite him because Janine had their whole bridge incident but it wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't have went that way had she not been you know crazy enough I guess to uh, to act out like that mm. so uh, but I, I think I think that was a really fascinating scene and that's not even one of the scenes that I would call the highlight yeah I, there's yeah, I, no, I, not at all. I, th- I think the kneeling at the bathtub was a fantastic scene, and I think this was a fantastic scene, but I wouldn't call those the highlights of the episode, which is maybe no. just a, a testament to how good this finale was. So, Serena Joy takes off without in a car with a different driver into a car that's obviously locked, uh, has little curtains on the windows, doesn't say where she's going, and she informs the guard she's not to get out under any circumstances. Offred has to stay in the car, and you're not really sure why she's there. And I'll give it to them. I didn't really call it. I didn't predict. No, me either. Because uh, 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 I think I felt like, oh, she's probably going to a private doctor or something to get further tests or something like that. It felt maybe like it was going down that path. Yeah, I wasn't entirely sure. I was like, okay, you're staying in the car, but why? Yeah. But I, 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 did, I got that it was maybe a power play, but I, I didn't get quite to this. Po- well, it was a power play. I did go one step. And, yeah. I mean... It was probably the worst type of power play she could have possibly done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think it. I think what makes this so effective. So obviously, we see and we, we stay with Offred's perspective. Everything's from a distance. We see it through the curtain, through the window in the car. We, we never just go up for a close up of what's happening. Yeah, it's uh, in this show has been doing a lot since yeah. the start, but we just stay with the one who it's affecting. Uh, but Hannah, Hannah comes out in her little what the pink kid uniform. This is what the, kid, the little yeah. girls wear, and. We, we, and she, nothing really happens in the scene itself with you know with Serena. Serena Joy just sort of speaks to her. She's she's clearly having a little chat with her. She's sort of pointing at things and uh, mm. just saying hello, essentially. Uh, but the scene is heartbreaking because the entire thing is from inside the car. And Offred, when she sees her, there's that moment of like absolute, almost bliss that her daughter's okay. But then it turns to let me out, and she starts banging in the windows. Yeah. She starts crying. She can't get out. It is it is emotionally gut wrenching. Um, and do you know what I love about this scene is this scene could have ended with like Hannah could have went inside the building again and Serena could have just looked over at the car and they could have cut there one yeah. look to say you know why I did this would have been all it, all it took because her buying on that window was heartbreaking her, her not being able to get out was emotionally draining but the yeah. scene didn't end there the scene kept going Serena got back in the car in the front this time and she rolled down the window just a little bit and Alfred pleaded to see her, to see Hannah, to see her daughter. And Surya said, I don't think that would do very good for any of us. And she, she spouted out a couple of things, but ultimately it boiled down to, if my child is kept safe, then so will yours. Yeah. And yeah she, made, she made it very clear that she can go and see this child anytime she mm. wants. Presumably because she's still the wife of a high-ranking commander. Yeah. So she has that, you know, certain privileges. Yeah, also from the glimpses we've seen of where the kids are and their surroundings, it does seem like there's a certain... It's, it's all women who take care of them, seemingly, yeah. from what we've seen so far. Just given when they, they, they you know when they brought the kids out of that uh, that dinner, uh, when we've got a glimpse when Offred was walking through the street, it seems like at, at least the girls, maybe not the boys, maybe the boys are in a different situation. Yeah. Um, but it's, that seems to be the case. And it was funny because I said earlier on, like when we were on at the bathtub, I was almost expecting Offred to just go for it, and we got that here. Yeah, she she does not give a shit. She she drops all pretending, all everything, everything goes, and I could. Do you know what? I knew it was building up to a sea bomb. I was waiting for yeah. it. It felt yeah, like it was yeah. going there the entire time. But she's like, and but Joe, you know what, Joe, what's so good about this scene is she says, "Oh, you're vicious. You're a monster. You're an absolute." evil bitch it, you know, that's kind of like that was the whole gist and then eventually the sea bomb but all of it it was like all season we've been kind of seeing hints of this we've been seeing her being awful but then hoping that maybe she's starting to turn over a new leaf or hoping that she's seen the humanity in the situation you know when she's seen the ambassador from Mexico who was also a woman and she asked uh, how do you feel that the book you read cannot be actually be you know the book you've written cannot be read by any other woman anymore like all, all these things we've seen all these things build up but to finally get to this point where we're, A, she finally shows the, ex- the extent, she shows the extent that she's willing to go to, 
So we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that even if there is humanity in there, even if she does regret certain elements, she, the way she's going about it is not right. She's yeah, she's, yeah, she's all in still. She, yeah, she instead of trying realizing the system's broken and she has to try and fix it, she's now abusing it for herself to feel better about it rather yeah. than anything else. So to have so to have offer to have June just say everything that we are thinking and mean it. Yeah. If it, it it's both horrifying as a scene because it is such a she, she's in such a dark place, but it's also extremely exhilarating as an audience to have her finally just feel free enough to say no, screw you, you evil lots of words I can't say. Yeah. <laughs> um, do, do you know what I, I, I really like about that tirade that she goes on? Yeah. Much like how you said the scene could have cut before. Mm. This, it, it goes on, you know, it goes on just like you, you think, oh, it's building to the sea bomb, but there's still more after. Yeah, there's a little bit after, yeah. And, that, that, that's it, it gives it this extra, just this level of authenticity where it's like it just keeps going. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's worth mentioning as well, she's dropping F-bombs all the way up to that C-bomb oh, as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the fact that she just says F-you, something that she's probably been screaming inside for forever. Like, all season, she's yeah. in her head, she's been screaming that phrase at her. And to finally just say it. And she, and as much as you can say, oh, she knows she's not going to turn around and give her any trouble for this because she wants the baby. It's like, she knows... Yeah. I don't think she's thinking in her head, oh, I know I'm safe, I'm going to get away with this. It's not a sly thing. This is pure no, emotion. No. This, this is coming from a place of pure and utter emotion and nothing else. Uh, yeah. I think the one with, at the bath, maybe that was in her mind. Mm. Because, you know, it was fresh news and it was like, oh, I can use this to my advantage just for a moment. This one, nah, none of that. Yeah, it, it, may, it may have been. I, to me, I'm seeing that bathtub scene as like a precursor to this moment when she's mm. almost at breaking point and then yeah. then seeing Hannah and what, what, what Serena yeah, says yeah. to her, it's like, nah, that's it. Yeah, All bets yeah. are off. Um, and I, I've said this before about the show that it'll it'll give you some elements of hope and then it'll just pull the rug out and it'll put you into the worst place you've been all season and <laughs> I, that's that's what this felt like Yeah, that's what this really felt like and it's really interesting that where the rest of the plot goes with uh, her and obviously that, this inspires her to look at the package uh, and obviously there was speculation from Moira last episode oh it could be a bomb, it could be anthrax it could be any of these these tools that like a resurgence might be using in a sort of dark way to try and fight back and it turns out it's not, it turns out it's actually just a it's, it's the mail basically it's yeah. it's lots of secret letters that people are sending to Canada or somewhere else uh, to hopefully maybe get loved ones contacted. I, I think some are to Mayday you know, yeah, probably. themselves because some of them are like please can you help me yeah, but she just she starts reading the first one, and you you know it's very clear what they all are, and she's it's because it starts overlapping. We don't actually have to hear what any of them individually say, really. Yeah, you you get the point. And it's like okay, yeah. I get it. Um, but again, it's very. I was actually really worried uh, in the morning when she wakes up, and they're all sprawled out across the floors. Like you better get them cleared up. That's not something you can quickly hide. You you need to assemble those. Yeah, yeah, they were in this really tight, neat package, you know, all yeah. stacked nicely, and now they're just this mess of on the floor. Uh, now, obviously, I'm I'm skipping over uh, some side plot stuff. I will save that for the end. I'll, I just want to stick with Offred uh, until we're we're done with her. Uh, but the bells ring again, and it's like it's time to go for uh, I forget what they call it again. The uh... oh, damn it, we did this the last time. We this did happened. it, didn't we? Yeah. Um, but it's the same thing where someone's getting into trouble, and all the handmaids get sort of carted out uh, to give the punishment. The last time it was uh, basically to kick the guy to death. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. Um, bells ring again. Uh, off for joining late. Uh, I actually, it's fun. I love that this show can make me really laugh at times, despite the fact of how dark and emotional it is. But when she goes outside and uh, you know, off off Glen two point uh, tells it to shut up, and then off off just says, "No, you shut up." Like that really yeah. made me laugh. I did, yeah. That really made me laugh. You're you're the worst shopping partner ever. No, shut up. You shut up. Like <laughs> ah, it really cracked me up. Um, but I, I think that, that, that really lets the show breathe in its humanity. Like, because in real life, when something's really bad, but when people are at their worst, times are rough, you know, maybe, maybe you're in a really bad situation in your world where someone's dying of cancer, or maybe you're having money troubles and you're worried about paying rent, whatever it is, people use humour to feel better at the, even the darkest yeah, of it's, times. It's, it's gallows humour. You, you can't be doom and gloom at the, ho the whole time. Sometimes you have to forget about it and just 
enjoy the moment or have your stupid little fight in the moment about something silly or whatever and this show's done a really good job of that where sometimes you'll forget about the rest of the things going on and it is just whatever's in the scene and it'll be the stupid little joke that Mm. so I appreciate that so they get lined up Aunt Lydia's there as we've seen before and again going back to a little line that really made me laugh was uh, that these wheelbarrows come out with all the stones and one of the random handmaids at the front turns to her friend and goes Oh, I hate stonings. Yeah. Like, this has become so normal. That, oh, I, I don't like this version. I, I like it better when we do something else. The stonings, I'm not, as fan, I'm not a fan of. Yeah, it's but, kind of sad, isn't it? But again, it's the idea that this has become the new normal. Like, they're yeah. so used to this by now, like, it desensitizes them to it. Uh, which is horrific in and of itself. That it doesn't even feel that much anymore. So they kept the stones and they talk about. Uh, because the last time it was someone who'd, uh, it was a guy who'd raped someone. It, yeah. And this time, it's, uh, Aunt Lydia says, it's, it's an offence to harm a child. Uh, that is yeah. the worst thing possible. At, at first, I thought this was, because obviously we had the scene earlier on with the, all the commanders doing their, their council. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, it was like, oh, the wife's asked for the worst punishment possible to save his immortal soul, basically. It was, uh, yeah, it was a subversion here. They set you up thinking it was so going to be So that's him. what the expectation was going to be. It was, it was going to be him. But... They go in a circle, and I think the other thing is, is not only did they set that up, no, admittedly, they do cut off that guy's hands. Uh, it's actually quite a grotesque scene when they're just like slicing it. Just, it's, cause it's, very, it's so clinical, but the idea that they, they kind of rip it off, like they get it cut so far and then they sort of pull it off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really, really grotesque. And let's not gloss over that scene, because first of all, that's the first time I've seen the commanders in this scenario, where they're at work, essentially. We've never seen that before, not really. No, no. This is like you say, this is their, their yeah. chambers of, of. And we have the uh, the main one in the middle, who we know from Nick's flashbacks, uh, yeah. sort of giving it. Because and it's funny how uh, th- that entire scene. I actually really liked uh, the commander's stuff there because he he's almost like, oh, we should you know give him a little slap in the wrist, and you know we've got work to go back to. He's kind of writing it off because he knows he's guilty of the same damn thing. Yeah, it's, it's almost like he wants to set a precedent. I think mm. if if in case his comes up, it's like, well, we set the precedent before, so. We can't go any harsher for me now, can we? Yeah, because um, yeah, because he, he he tries to just he's like, oh, we, he's a very good supporter of the cause, and he's always been loyal, um, and who here hasn't made mistakes? And but then when the uh, you know the head commander's like, yes, but his wife asked for the harshest punishment, and just the look in the commander's face, he's like, shit, Serena could do that to me. Yeah, I actually thought they were going to uh, cut off something else if you get my gist. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Until they started like writing on his arm, and I was like, "Oh, right, okay, they're uh, going for the hands. He can't, you know, his hands can't touch anything symbolic." You know, I get yeah, it. Yeah. I thought two hands was a bit in the, the cruel side because I feel like if you still want him to work, then at least give him his writing hand still. But then maybe he just had a good mind, like it was a, a, a yeah, strategic mind for all we know. Maybe, but you know, harshest punishment. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. So, you, so your expectations, expectations him, but at the same time, you also... I think the current thought right now is that Janine's still in a coma. Because the last time we've seen her, she was it was the end of the last episode, and she was just lying in the hospital bed. Yeah. So you never think for a second that she's going to be paraded out, kind of smelling in the same way that she, she no, usually does. Honestly, I also I thought she was just safe from this, despite what she'd done. I thought, no, the, the, the handmaids are too valuable a commodity to waste like yeah, this, but they, they, despite they, what they do. She can be pregnant again, so that's perhaps too valuable to punish right, to this which, extent. That's why I almost just dismissed her as a possibility. But of course it is, Janine. And they, they film this beautifully as well, where she, you can just sort of see like the red coat coming through like between the other red coats as they're in this circle. Mm. And she's leading into the middle, and there's this realisation in all their faces. Obviously, Offred more than anyone, because that's her main character, but it cuts to the other ones. There's obviously the other main one that she speaks to a lot that we see, uh, not off Glen 2.0, oh, the sort of the one who's, you know, the Mayday girl who's helped her. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's set all that, and it's going around the, the circle, and they're all reacting, and they're, they're all kind of in shock. And Aunt Lydia is, you know, doing her, her usual our usual preaching which is like oh this must be, girl must be punished I know this is difficult but this must be done this is your duty so on and so forth and what I really like is that it's off Glen 2.0 who we've seen is kind of maybe sympathise is too strong a word but she, she she is not against the system as it currently is she she is she's not liked when uh, Offred's either made them lay or she's like not liked her doing things off book because she wants to st- stick to the system because it has benefited her in some way 
Yeah, we had that scene where she spoke about how, in some ways, she's better off now. Yeah. So, to a point, she's willing to follow their rules. Yeah. So it said a lot. I think. That, I think the scene. It, it just it said so much having her be the one that comes out first and says no we can't do this I'm not killing Janine and it's notable that after she says her real name it's when the guard properly pistol whips her yeah. uh, so, well it's not quite pistol whipping when it's with a rifle but you, you get my point rifle smack rifle smack uh, but so he does that it's right at that point and that's when they carry her out and she's, her face is all bloody and take her away but having her say it it's kind of a, it's kind of there's a scene where I can put it to in Serenity but that's full of spoilers so I can't it, it's by having the person who's the the most least you know the person who's least likely to stand up against them to have them be the first ones to stand up it says yeah. everything that needs to be said about how severe the scene is right because the expectation is they just put off Red go straight up and you know while that would have worked mm. I do think that, that that would have been the easy way out I think and this works much better it does work better because it it shows that how opposing this is to everything they are. They're going to make, they're going to make the handmaids punish their own, and it's someone who they've already seen be punished so much. They've seen someone go through so much. Uh, Offred had to save her life at the end of the last episode. Yeah, whole thing's great, and in the worst way possible, but it's great. Yeah. Um, and Offred after this walks in, puts her hand out drops the stone and then says I'm sorry Aunt Lydia and it, this is the biggest FU she could possibly give to her it's this fantastic callback to that flashback at the start of the episode and she does this and obviously Aunt Lydia looks pissed but then the, the other handmaid that we know quite well comes out does the same thing and says I'm sorry Aunt Lydia and then you get this idea that all of them come in and they all do and it's, it's like sure there's going to be consequences and perhaps more for Alfred more than anyone but because she started it, it empowers the rest of them. It makes them all feel powerful enough that if we all do this, they can't punish us all. Yeah, and it's uh, I think it's here where there's a, a great line. It's like, well, if you didn't want us to be an army, you shouldn't have given us uniforms. That wasn't actually then. I understand, was that earlier on? I understand why you've put that there, because I was thinking yeah. of it when this happened. But it was that was actually at the start of the episode. That was when she was first yeah. walking out. Ah, you're right. Uh, I think it's just I, I I pictured this the scene with them in the red cloaks. And yeah, just... it was. Uh, I think it was actually right at the start when she was walking back with the uh, the, the shopping the the, the, the groceries. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was uh, definitely in my mind here, yeah. which is but why no, I'm putting it there. I thought of it. Yeah, that line was so well set up at the start that when this happened, it felt like they just became an army. Yeah, and 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 this way, so it nicely tied into that. And it, it, it is. It's kind of this idea that you suppress because you suppressed us you made us unite. Like, we are united because you made us this way. Uh, yeah, and then you have to shot them all walking down the street together as almost an army. Yeah, with uh, the, 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 feeling thing, the song. The feeling good yeah. song playing, yeah. Uh, yeah, and obviously off at the front, because obviously she doesn't have a partner. But that was one of the things yeah. that I really liked, is uh, after Aunt Lydia tells them all to go home, and they all take their, uh, their cones back, there's one left on one of the... Cause yeah. They're, that's off Glen 2.0. But who's I, I really taken. liked it for for that scene when, you, when they're all walking. Like I said, you have her at the front because she's the furthest one to go. She's the last one to break off. Mm. But she's also on her own at the head. Because, but it's she's not leader. just... Yeah. yeah, it works. Obviously, symbolically, you want her on her own anyway. But they gave us a good reason for it in the, the plot. They justified why she hasn't got someone with her. Mm. So it worked really well for me there. Yeah, yeah, every, everything just kind of lined up. It didn't feel forced. It felt completely natural because... And I think that's something I'd really really commend this show for is how every single great moment every single time it's it's given us this setup where we get this great emotional moment or even a great cinematic shot like that where she's at the front yeah everything has been set up naturally so that it doesn't just feel like oh we wanted this cool shot because that, that's obviously the thing we want yeah. to show yeah it feels like it, it may have come about from that which is maybe that's part of the reason why they chose off two. to to, to stand up at first. I'm going to def- no, I'm going to defend him. I'm going to defend him and say that, that that this was the this was the icing on the cake. I think the choice was what what we spoke about. It it said everything about the scene having her do it first. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I think it works for both. I mean, again, it's probably just being cynical that. But, oh, I, I, so thing, like, but even be, if they did, you can be cynical about the the characters in in the show. I think I think the people writing this show have earned enough respect at this point oh. throughout the season. To give them the benefit of the doubt on that. Oh, I, I am. I'm just like I say. I'm a cynic where I, I see that. I go, I get that they probably did that for that, and then just 
tied it, you know, maybe they decided way earlier on in the script writing and then tied it in so that, you know, that the, the she was the one that it would mean the most for it to stand up for anyway. So it worked for both. I mean, I think that I think that was first. I I don't think that this I don't think the decision was to be wanting this cool shot. So we're going to set it up so that that that, that yeah. has that. That's fair enough. I, I, I don't know. I don't really care either way. They got both. I I just I I am going to give them the credit here because I feel like they have done nothing all season but prove that they are capable of oh, s- of doing the the thing that works best in the scene for the emotion and for to convey the information in the best way. I I think. Now, I want to commend them for that choice of having off Glenn 2.0 being the one who steps out first. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then you have the knock-on effect that it lets her be the leader of this army as they're walking down the street. So, uh, no, great, great, great stuff. Uh, and what I think is really interesting after this, though, is when she gets up the next day and she's looking out the window and the black van's coming and she, she's sure they're coming for her. And we get that shot where she's sitting at the window like she did at the start of the show. It doesn't feel like, yeah. She, I think she even says in her narration, "Oh, like maybe I should feel terrified, but I'm not." Yeah. Uh, and Nick comes in first, interestingly, and says, "Just go with him. Trust me." Which makes me think, is there something else going on here beyond just the obvious? But we'll we'll find out next season because obviously we're ending this. This is where we're getting to our cliffhanger. Um, and she goes with her, and I love that we get the whole entire walk down the stairs, out the. And I think this is even the first time we've even seen this entrance to the house, where because typically we always go down that back way past the you know where the car is yeah. and it's the big yeah, gate. Yeah. Uh, but this no, this is down the front steps, uh, with the men in black as they're taking taking her down. I love that shot of her walking down from behind. It's all it's a, it's a one or once she gets out the front door, it's just a shot from behind her going down, then it, it spins round. Uh, as she goes into the van, and as she goes into the van. It's not sad music that's playing, and she as as the door's shut and it gets darker, you can see a smell appear across her face, because as she said at the window before she came down in her narration, that moment of defiance, that moment of maybe inspiring the rest of the handmaids, was maybe just enough that maybe the world will start to change, at least yeah. in a small way. Like, like maybe it was worth it. Yeah, maybe starting something that will make the world a slightly better place for her daughter eventually, is worth what this will bring to her. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, in my head, I'm thinking, well, once they find out she's pregnant, they're maybe going to rethink how they treat her uh, as yeah. a punishment because they, they still want the kid to be born. Admittedly, it might give her a ticking time bomb. It might be, it might get to a point here where like, oh, well, okay, you're fine for nine months, but... Yeah. Do you know what is funny? I, I considered maybe it was a false positive, it could and be, then, yeah. but I dismissed it because they did that already earlier in the season. We we already mm. had that where people thought she was pregnant, and we saw how true, yeah. she got away with things. So I feel like would they pull it twice? It feels like that would be a little bit cheap if they did. I I don't think they will. Admittedly, if they did pull it again, I would at least argue it it wasn't like an actual test before. It was literally it was just jumping to conclusions. Yeah. Yeah, it was a yeah. false positive only because the characters decided to think of it that way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Just I mean, it, in terms of how we played it and for the episode and you know the everyone's reaction, oh, sure, kind sure. of we saw that already. But the reason for it isn't actually that uncommon. You know, w- women having their period late and then you know it, it coming eventually just a bit later than expected isn't isn't an yeah, uncommon yeah, thing. It's normal by any means. So. Uh, at least it wouldn't feel logically out of place. It would maybe just feel out of place from a uh, a sort of thematic treatment point of view. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, no, so uh, fantastic ending. Uh, but I, I think the two standout scenes were definitely the the scene in the car and then the the, the potential stoning scene. Yeah, uh, were both the, the the fantastic standout moments, both for different reasons. What one was offered our lowest, and then the other one was her sort of taking basically fighting back, having a moment of defiance, yeah. which made her feel probably more powerful than she's had all season. Oh, definitely. So, no, great stuff. Now, obviously, the other stuff, we, I mean, we talked about the uh, the, the, the commander's uh, stuff, but the one thing we have left out, there was a couple of scenes with Moira, uh, mm. which obviously I think very important. Uh, Moira, we see her sort of traipsing across snow and then eventually get into, into a car and she, she sort of wipes the the thick sort of dart off the uh, license plate and sure enough the license plate says Ontario on it and she's like shit I'm in Canada <laughs> and she just sort of like lies back and sort of yeah, shock like, yeah I made it yeah it, obviously she's relieved but it's almost like a shock rel- relievement as well like she's not yeah. really it's just not like breaking down in tears and crying a happiness it's just like 
holy shit, I'm, <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> I'm yeah. here. Um, what I thought was really interesting though is because she goes to like you know, this refugee centre and someone, a Canadian guy, is like taking her through the process here. You, you, get, you get bystander, you get a bit of money, you get a phone, you might be relocated later. If your name's on anyone's list, anyone who's already made it across, they get notified when you come across. Do you have a list you want to give and kind of thing? And we see the process. And what I really liked about all this is she's going through the pro- this almost mind-numbing process of like... Because for him, it's just like a daily routine almost. I mean, yeah. he, sure, he mentions that sometimes they have none for like five days and then they get so many at once. But it's still part of a routine. It's still, here's the process, here's all the little boxes I need to check off and give you these things. And I, I don't think it's saying that the act of this is... Uh, is he's not been inhumane the way he's treating it it's it's just the the idea that for her it's this like big success it's her this was so difficult this was like a fight for our life to get here but then once she gets here for everyone else who's taking her in it's like okay you're just another number but not in a bad way but it's just this yeah, is the way th- it has I to be i think it's another way of showing the fact that this guy is numb to this and you know it's just they say he's just doing yeah. his job it's another way of just showing how awful the world is hmm I mean, maybe not the, the world at large, because, I mean, he talks about, obviously, you know, Canada are taking refugees. He says you might be relocated to another country. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, well, I, I don't think there's anything bad about what they're doing. I think it's just the, the, the stark contrast of when you get there, yeah. and it is just such a sort of, almost sort of mundane routine for them. What they're still doing is very good, and I, I don't think, like, I, I don't think this is a criticism of anyone who takes in refugees by any means. I actually think it's the opposite. I, th- I think the fact that they need to be refugees in the first place is kind of the, the more... Because there's a, a great shot at the start of the scene where uh, it's, like a, it's like a campaign poster for whoever's, like, you know, whoever's running the country in Canada, presumably, or maybe there's elections coming up, and it says, we support refugees, which it is very political just in the current climate, but the idea that Americans themselves are now the refugees, and that maybe there is people, maybe there's a political party in these countries saying, no, we don't want to take them in. And yeah. that, that's like a fighting yeah, I mean, the, point the, now. There, there probably is because yeah. that's politics. <laughs> but like, that's a really fascinating idea, and the idea that she's like, like, yeah, the, the, he's been he's, he's been helpful that the country's set up to take in these people and be nice to them and give them a, a bit of hope. But the idea that it is just kind of the system. It's not this great like. It's almost like in her head. Not that she would logically think there's going to be a parade when she gets to Canada and everyone's going to be so happy that she survived. Yeah, but it's like no, you're into a system now that's going to going to treat you better and going to do a lot of better things for you. But it's not this like crossing the finish line and people are cheering because of it. Uh, you're one of millions who have tried, and yeah, there's thousands that have made it, but um, it's not that great success. But at the same time, what? Because ultimately, that can never feel that way. I don't think you can ever have that feeling from just getting out and the people. You know, they're there to help you, but ultimately they're they're, they're strangers and they're doing what they can. Um, but yeah, ultimately, that maybe like... maybe they would have been happy like the very first time, but after you yeah. do it hundreds of times, it's it it would be it it would be false if they tried to say that they were that happy every time. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I, I think again, it's it's not painting them in a bad light at, at all. It, it's just this is the kind of the horrors that her own government our own country is put upon her that yeah that this is how it's it feels at this point um but again I, th- I think that that moment of parade the moment of happiness doesn't really come from just getting across the line it's 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 the human connections it's other people it's getting across with other people you care about is what, what makes it matter which is why i think ultimately she does have that moment but it comes later it comes later when luke comes and finds her because and I love that she's surprised that she was on his list. Because he's like, oh, you were on my list. I came to get you. It's like, wait, I was on your list as family? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and she breaks down and like hugs him at that moment. And it, that, that is a moment of true happiness because it it's like, not only is she happy to see him, she's even surprised that she was that important to him that he, he would put yeah. her name on the list. And I, I think that, I, I think that, that says to me and the reason why that works so much is because... She felt so alone when she was a Jezebel. She felt so alone. And sure, Offred would seen her and she inspired her to be herself again. But she still felt alone. She still felt like she was fighting on her own for everything. She felt like she it was a you know a lone wolf fight. And I think the idea that someone just cared about her, that someone from before was there to no, I'm here and I'm, I'm I I care that you've survived. It's not just that you've survived. It's it's kind of like uh, Offred in the last episode where she was saying at least someone will remember me if you yeah. care about me, Nick. Um, 
So I, I think the idea that someone actually gives a shit it just means so much, and it's oh, something definitely. she's not felt in a long time, uh, which is why she breaks down. It is it's, it's nice that they found each other. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. So no, I, I think it's a fantastic moment. Uh, it is definitely. It's it, it sticks out as a really strong moment, even in this episode, which is exactly yeah, which is you know really impressive. Yeah, it's just it's just the idea that people ultimately need to be kind to each other and be there for each other, uh, which is kind of what the system's not about. It's about, no, you have a purpose and you are just a, yeah. you are just a number. Um, and the refugee process almost feels like that to a much nicer extent. You know, it's, it's not as evil, it's not as... But you are ultimately just another number. It's it's people with people that make make things matter, that make things care, make people... Yeah, yeah, it's the personal connections rather than just the, yeah. the hard facts. Yeah, so... Which is why, which I think, for a lot of reasons, why that moment works so beautifully. But yeah, yeah, her her, her being surprised that he had her on a list uh, is probably one of the most touching moments of the, the entire show. And I think it says yeah. something that comes from someone who hasn't offered. It's not even our main character. It's it's this supporting mm-hmm. cast that they've built up. Yeah, yeah, so. it's kind of crazy that they've they've managed that because obviously she doesn't have that much screen time. Yeah, not really. She's done some flashbacks. She obviously was in Jezebel stuff, but. It's yeah. not amounted to that much, but they've used the time so well that her breaking down in his arms uh, is extremely beautiful. Uh, yeah, and he's had even less screen time. Yeah, and it's kind of what we're fighting for, ultimately. Like it's what people are fighting for. Yeah, it's, yeah. You want you want these moments. It's reunions. It's it's the people you care about around you. Um, there, there's a, a maybe a more upsetting side to this, where now now he's going to actually hear because she can actually give some first-hand account of what Offred's going through, of what June's going through, and he's going to have to hear about what his wife's actually doing yeah, right but now. Yeah, maybe that's going to inspire him to be more of a, an activist and, you know... Yeah, maybe, maybe. Because yeah. I think at this point he might assume that she was dead, for all he knows. You know, in the escape attempt. Well, not at this point, because he got that... Oh, no, he got that just before, but... Yeah. He, he doesn't really know what she's going through. Like, up till... That was recently compared to this still that was within oh sure months. yeah before that yeah he he may have assumed yeah. that she might be dead and then he got that note which didn't have a lot of information in it it was just i'm alive i love you find a dollar yeah. that, that was the, the gist of the yeah, yeah. Whole thing. but then now he can go all right that's what she's actually going through we've got to do something and this is where she is you'll, you'll know for sure what city she's in that kind of thing yeah yeah it, it wouldn't surprise me if in season two we have more of uh, this stuff we have maybe not every episode but i can see I can see Moira and Luke in Canada and what they're doing becoming a permanent subplot of the show. Yeah, uh, especially with, with Moira. I can't see her just sitting still and accepting that she's out of it now. She absolutely. seems to want she's going to need to fight. Absolutely. Yeah, I can totally see that. And maybe maybe the strength from each other is what motivates them to do so. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. So, no. Uh Emotional is always uh, emotional roller coaster. You're you're happy. You're sad. You're kind of you're in that weird place where you're so sad that you're kind of laughing about it. Like I feel like very few forms of art will actually get me to that point where you're in that. Well, I might as well laugh because we're all screwed. But th- this yeah. show achieves it, <laughs> and it's it's yeah, it does. It's great. the The acting throughout has been fantastic uh, all season. Moss is basically put on a put on a clinic. It's an acting clinic. Yeah. This is what you do if you want to be an actor, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That's what uh, it feels I'd, be, like. I'd be very surprised if she's not at least nominated for all the awards. Oh, yeah. at, at the end of year. She, if she win. doesn't win. She probably should. I mean, I'm not going to say that just yet because there's so much of the year left to go. But, if, you know, nominations at the bare minimum I, and I, serious contender. I will be surprised. I will be highly surprised if anyone but her wins for drama. Uh, but it comes like to I say, it, it, just in case there's something comes out of nowhere, we I mean this kind of came out of relatively nowhere for us. We didn't, we weren't that aware of it. Yeah, we knew it was coming, but we weren't super hyped for it because we didn't know what the quality was going to be like and uh, right that kind of thing. Um, I I she she should win all the all the all the awards, all the acting awards should go to her. You, you're that confident. I kind of am. Like, I start to say there's not other great, you know, acting going on in other shows and there might not be other great acting. Like, you know, every week we watch Saul and, like... Yeah. Like, uh... Like Rhea Seahorn, who plays Kim, like, she's fantastic in that and I'm, I'm compared to the other ladies because typically acting's still split into, you know... MTV... Yeah. Funnily enough, MTV Movie Awards are the first awards show who's went, no, we're going to just have one acting category because it's actually really? kind of weird MTV. that we split it up. I know. MTV Movie Awards, the, the the movie awards show that does not have a best directing category, but does have best kiss. 
They're the first ones to go, you know what, it's actually kind of sexist that we split these up because there's really no reason to. The, the only reason is to ensure that... Yeah, both uh, a man and a woman get an award, yeah. Right, it's to ensure that women get picked as well, that like they can't go, oh, look, you know, we're just picking men year after year. It's to ensure that they can't yeah. do that. But here's, here's the thing. Now, admittedly, very subjective. It's more of a... It would be more of a fight normally. I think TV does really well with uh, actresses. I feel like they, they, they get a bit more opportunity than they do in movies to have these meaty, meaty roles where they get to really yeah. stretch their muscles. Honestly, I mean, again could be more stuff but so far this year if it was a unified award if it was just no no either man or woman someone gets a best actor award moss would get it right now from me so far i agree yeah and that's not to say there won't be other great stuff i'm expecting rami uh, malik and mr robot to completely crush it but even then if i compared her performance here to him in the past couple of seasons of that i'd still give it to her i agree which is why the only reason i'm not like definitively saying yeah. yeah she'll she'll get it is because someone might come out and surprise me that i'm not because I, I didn't expect this from her even you know, before I'm, yeah before oh, sure. oh, oh, she, she's fine i expected a good performance but i didn't expect this absolutely but i just I, it, it to give us another performance that is better than this this year would be an absolute like miracle oh yeah almost. it would be yeah it would be a it's a long shot that we'll get anything close but yeah so uh, now phenomenal stuff music was great throughout the season both the, the choice of tracks to play at certain times was you know suitably ironic in most cases yeah. uh, and then the, the score especially the last episode I think episode 9 probably had the best score of the season but it's been pretty I good throughout that, yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, so music was great cinematography the direction has been on point it's been done a great job all season of again giving you the shots and the scenes from the perspective of the character we're following typically yeah it's done a very good job of i don't know how many different directors we've had obviously tv is often you know one per episode and you'll have 10 different directors but the style's been consistent as what you're but saying it's been, yeah, yeah it's been very consistent uh, and there's there's been no point where i can go oh that was a different director whereas in other tv yeah, shows that's... sometimes you can sometimes sometimes you can i feel like that's one thing that tv does usually does quite well actually i feel like it's not, I, you, you would think with different directors each episode that more often than not, you would feel like you'd notice a difference. And I feel like in most shows, they actually do a good job of not at least feeling that it doesn't. Now, admittedly, part of the reason for that, perhaps, is that because, at least with Network, they keep the styles really simple to yeah. make it easier to do that. Whereas here it was cause, uh, very... very Obviously, Mr. to bring up Mr. Robot again, Sam Esmail directed all 10 episodes of season 2. So clearly, <laughs> you know, sometimes they just cheat by just having the same director do the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, same with the like, True Detective season one, for example. That was the same director for the whole thing. But... Right, and I think this this is up there with those in terms of direction. Where typically, when I think of you know, oh, this is well directed show, I think of these ones that are from one vision. You know, it's one person going. Now nah, this is everything. I can tell you that the director of this episode only did this episode at the very least. Well, there you go. And I... this this the direction of this felt exactly the same as all the others, which is not a criticism. It's it's a credit because all yeah. of it has been excellent. No, I I agree. I'm just I clicked on the the first episode as well to see see if they did any others. Yeah, uh, it's it's potentially maybe the first three were done together just because they they've released them all. But even that, I doubt. Actually, they were. Oh, were they? It's exactly what you just said. First three episodes <laughs> were all the same director. Who interestingly, when I clicked on the name, uh, you know how in IMDb it always gives you whatever they've done the most of as the default first list. Yeah. Uh, the director who did the first three uh, is credited mostly for being a cinematographer, which doesn't surprise me actually. Yeah, no, and it's often something that it's often whoever does the first episode establishes the style that exactly. everyone else has yeah. to follow. So it makes sense they've got someone in there who, you know, gone right. These are the things that we want to do from the cinematography, and everyone else, you're following this. Uh, absolutely, uh, direction was on point. Music was good. Acting was great. Writing has been spectacular uh, yeah. in terms of setting up character motivations. In terms of putting you in the place where you feel what the character's feeling uh that's I, I mean if this doesn't win for us like when we do our awards at the end of the year we do a best new show Be best show overall I'll, I'll not make any predictions on that but best new show of the year i will be surprised if something else comes along that fights this yeah I'm, for I'm the top spot. There's, there's definitely been nothing so far yeah good stuff don't get me wrong but this is. I mean, it, it depends. Uh, an argument could be made for for Twin Peaks in the sense that that's it's, it's a, a return. Does it count? I wouldn't count that as new. 
for new right, shows, okay. I wouldn't count that. Well, yeah, yeah, that that one's a grey area. Whereas yeah. uh, that one, that that's where I'd have to reconsider. But. Well, that's when we get to best, just the top ten shows of the year. That's when we've got a fight on our hands. But yeah. I expect there'll be a couple of other things that'll also fight. So it was interesting last year. We was we were mostly on on the same page. Oh yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting to see if we are this year. <laughs> There's at least one that I know we're not going to be on. Oh okay. I I think, and it'll be yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, how that conversation goes and. What we settle on when we assemble a top ten mm. between us, but plenty of time uh, to worry about that. Oh yeah, we're only in June. That's, we're halfway through. But you know what? If we're going to say, "Oh, the year TV has been good so far," at the halfway point, it bloody well has because, yeah, geez, uh, it's been fantastic stuff. So no, Hammy's Tale. Uh, if you're some for some reason watching a, a review of the finale uh, without having seen it, go watch the show. It's fantastic. So yeah. Let us know what you think of the episode, of course. Let us know what you think of the whole season as a whole, because uh, it is a season finale. Uh, obviously, we're excited for season two. Uh, subscribe, all that stuff. Like, uh, If you want to support the channel, if you enjoy our discussions, uh, head over to patreon.com slash TV. See some of the bonuses over there. Uh, if you even want the bonuses, if you just want to feel good for supporting us, I mean, by all means, that, that's the main goal, really, uh, beyond anything else. But, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. Individual Twitters are on the screen. This has been a l- this is the longest review I've done of the show, but it makes sense because we sort of wrapped up a season kind of thing yeah. as well at the end. Um, but I am starving, so I am going to go and eat some food. So thank you very much for watching. As always, we'll see you next time. We'll see you next season, which is confirmed. Thankfully, uh, have you got any vanilla? Mm-hmm.